Hi, I'm Jen from House One, and today I'm showing how to properly apply wood stain. Wood stain has a warmth and a depth that can really highlight the unique grain of a wood project. And while most know the basics of applying stain, it's the nuances of the application that can really make or break the look. Here are the steps I take to get professional looking results. Number one is proper prep work. They say the success of any project is in the prep work and with stain that couldn't be more true. Stain highlights any imperfection in the wood. So if you bring your boards home in your car and you're banging them around, those nicks and dings are gonna be highlighted by the stain. In addition, boards that you pick up at the home center often have a waxy coating that almost gives off a sheen. Now if I were to apply stain directly to this board without any sanding, you can see how splotchy it would turn out as compared to a board that was sanded properly. Here's another example on one board where I sanded half the board, applied the stain, and then wiped away the stain to reveal that the unsanded side looks mottled, where the stain on the sanded side appears more even. Again, look at the mottled look within the grain versus the uniform look within the grain on the sanded side. And so to properly prep bare wood, I first sand with 120 grit sandpaper to open the grain of the wood. I wipe away the dust and then sand again with 120 grit. Next, I wipe away the dust and sometimes wipe the wood with a damp cloth to raise the fibers before I sand one last time with either 120 or 150 grit. If you're working with a softer wood like pine, you can sand it one last time with an even higher grit to help close the grain of the wood so that it accepts even less color from the stain. But even when I'm working with pine, I never really push it too much over 180 grit. It's also important to use a truly clean cloth to wipe away the dust between sanding because a dirty cloth will just push the dust around. Number two is apply conditioner. Now, I said I work a lot with soft pine and plywood, so applying a pre-stain conditioner is an absolute must on my projects. But it's equally important to allow the pre-stain conditioner to soak in before applying the stain. Let me give you an example. On this board, I'll just quickly apply some conditioner and then follow directly with stain. Look at how the stain mixes with the conditioner that's still sitting on top of the wood. It waters down the color and will give you an uneven finish. Instead, let the conditioner soak in for at least five to 10 minutes, but no more than two hours, and then apply your stain. Number three, apply the stain evenly. It's finally time to apply the stain to the wood, and I'm not really personally too picky about how I get the stain on the wood, whether it's with a brush, a sponge, or a cloth. The key is to get the stain on the wood without a splatter or without creating an end point where the stain soaks in and appears darker. In general, I like to coat the most visible edges first and then work on the large open areas nearby with long, even passes. Number four, wipe off the excess. Now, let's talk about how to wipe off the excess because I see a lot of people just ball up a rag and pull it across their board. But every little crease and fold in your rag is gonna create a little line as it drags across the stain. Instead, I fold a cloth with the edges tucked inside and then pull the smooth fold over the wood in the direction of the grain in long, even passes. Once you wipe off the excess, fight the urge to keep wiping as this will either take off too much stain or it'll start to pull the stain in places where it's already getting tacky. Next, I typically let my stain dry overnight. Now I know some dry times are shorter than that, but I like to be sure that the stain isn't going to lift off the board or drag as I apply my protective top coat. Once completely dry, a dark stain can sometimes look like mud and not show any of the grain, but don't panic. The final step is what creates the contrast. Number five, apply a top coat. The final step in this process is to protect the stain with a clear top coat. Now I prefer the warmth of traditional oil-based polyurethane or shellac, but you can also grab a water-based option depending on your preference. No matter what you choose, make sure that you mix it in a figure eight motion. Don't shake the can or else you'll have bubbles in your finish. Apply it with a high quality brush first coating the surface and then lightly pulling the brush in long, even passes to smooth it out. 
The key to a clear, smooth finish is to allow the finish to dry and then lightly sand it with 180 grit sandpaper. Wipe away the dust and then apply one last coat. This is always the game changer on my finish and gives it the smoothest, most professional looking feel. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more DIY skills and woodworking projects, visit the House One channel on thisoldhouse.com. I'm Jen Largis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.